before we get started talking about the varieties we're evaluating, I want to give you all some background on this trial. This is what we call plastic culture production. So you'll look here and see that all of these plants are planted into a plastic raised bed. Underneath this black plastic, we have drip irrigation um, that's run down the middle of the bed. This type of system is pretty typical for most of strawberry production in the southeast. Uh, within the system, we typically plant small plug plants in the fall, usually between uh, or usually before about the first or second week of October, and we allow them to establish during the fall. It's really important to get that good establishment in the fall because how big the plants grow during that period has a big impact on determining how much flowering and fruit production they do in the spring. Typically here in Arkansas, we're looking at blooms starting in March or April, and then we're harvesting from about April to May, and sometimes into June. It's about 30 days from a bloom to a ripe strawberry. All right, so here in this trial, we have nine different cultivars planted. We do have four replications of each of these cultivars. Uh, and what I wanna do today is walk through and talk about each one of those. Um, these plants were planted on September 30th of 2019 using plugs uh, and then have been managed using a standard fertility and pest management program as recommended in the Southeast Pest Management uh, Spray Guides and Production Guides. I do want to point out that on November 11th and 12th of 2019, we had a major freeze event where temperatures dropped down to the 20s uh, to teens. And this was really the first cold that we had experienced uh, in the fall of 2019. And so the plants really hadn't been acclimated yet. Uh, and due to rainfall that was coming, we weren't able to uh, cover the plants with row covers to protect them. So we did see some cold injury that happened to the plants um, early on in their life cycle. We went through and actually cut open crowns in the fall uh, and assessed them for damage and assigned a rating. Um, so our rating scale went from zero to three, zero being no damage, uh, one being minor damage, two being uh, kind of moderate damage, some, some real browning or darkening of the crown, and the three being very severe damage uh, and uh, some necrosis. So using that rating scale, we did go through in the fall um, and kind of do an assessment across the different varieties to see how susceptible they were to the cold damage. Our average rating across all of the varieties was 2.19 using that scale. So we did have some pretty significant damage. We did come back again in the spring and reassess and we did see that a lot of them grew out of it. We've also done plant biomass samples several times and we are gonna be collecting data on yield and fruit soluble solids. Uh, we are kind of in the early part of the season, and so today we really just want to walk through and kind of show you what the plants look like, what the fruit looks like, uh, and cut open some berries and show you the internal fruit color and make some comments about what we've been seeing so far. So let's get started. So we're going to walk through and look at each one of the nine varieties that we have in this trial. But before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that we need to kind of think about what we're seeing here within the context of the conditions happening at this location and some of the other things that have gone on in the season. So of course we've had um, that cold event that happened November 11th to 12th, and that's definitely affected how some of these plants have grown off. We've also had a very wet season, so above average rainfall from the fall of 2019, continuing on into 2020. We've also had some hail damage recently, um, and we are seeing that on the leaves and the berries. So if we look down uh, through some of these plants, we see some tears in the leaves, uh, and then we see some marks on the fruit where uh, the berries have been damaged by hail. And I also want to point out that this location is pretty windy um, as we look across this, you know, and you can probably hear it in some of our microphones that there's a lot of wind here. And so that's definitely affecting uh, the plants to some degree and plants may be a little bit more dried out and stressed. So let's go ahead and get started with our first variety. And this is Camino Real. Camino Real released from the University of California in 2001 you know, pretty widely planted in Arkansas uh, because of good shelf life and yields. Last fall, when we were looking at runner production, uh, pretty similar runner production to Chandler um, at about 1.5 runners per plant. And if we dig down and start looking at some of the fruit, you know, um, pretty good uniform berry shape, um, some nice sized berries in here for sure, and a lot of green small fruit that are coming along. Definitely been harvesting off of this for a little while. Um, it's not one of our earliest varieties. A lot of buds though still there. We did see some cold damage on this variety, but um, pretty good recovery. When we look into the fruit color, um, pretty good coloring uh, into the edges of the fruit, kind of a hollow center. Overall, I would say this variety maybe didn't have quite the plant biomass that we would like to see, um, but there are still some blooms in there that are coming along. We'll continue to evaluate community rail as we move forward. 
Our next variety is one that probably everyone is familiar with, and this is Chandler. Uh, this is kind of the standard variety that gets planted a lot in Arkansas and throughout the Southeast. It's really stemmed back in 1983 from the University of California. Uh, for a Southern grown variety, it's thought to be quite cold hardy. Um, and we did observe that. And so it had the lowest average cold damage ratings uh, in the fall after the November 11th freeze. Again, our scale was from zero to three for cold damage with zero being no damage and three being severe damage and some necrosis or some death of the crown. Chandler had an average rating of 1.5 in the fall um, when we were doing those assessments. And so that would be slightly above minor cold damage. Uh, when we biomassed in the late fall, um, these plants averaged about 1.75 crowns per plant. So definitely below ideal. And I think a lot of that is going back to that cold event in November, sending plants into an early dormancy. Let's dig down and start looking at some of the fruit uh, set here. Uh, you know, we still see a lot of blooms and buds in here. Um, starting to see um, some ripening fruit, you know, as we move through here, fruit size is maybe, you know, there's some medium sized berries in there, but maybe not the fruit set and size that we would like to see some possibly some pollination issues there as well. If we look into the fruit internal coloring, uh, this is a smaller berry for Chandler, um, but good, nice uh, red color through to the center. Okay, our next variety uh, is Albion, and this is the only day neutral that we were able to include in the trial this year. Um, released in 2006 from the University of California, known for being good, having good yields and some large attractive berries. If temperatures are mild into May and June, it can continue to produce. Um, there's some thinking that, of course, with the day neutral types, that you need to feed a little bit higher rate of nitrogen. And of course, um, it can have this variety in particular can have problems with two spotted spider mites, um, which is not untypical for a lot of the day neutral types. One thing that I do want to mention about what we've seen with Albion this year is that it had pretty high ratings of cold damage. Uh, the average was 2.5 in the fall. So this was moderate to severe. And we did observe that some of this damage was still present in the spring. And so we didn't see really good recovery on this variety. Let's move through and kind of look at some of the fruit set. You know, the plants are definitely smaller than what we would like to see. See some nice sized fruit, fruit starting to color up. Some nice fruit over here for sure. Um, some smaller green berries that'll be coming along soon. All right, let's move along to our next variety, which is uh, Liz. And this is a newer release, uh, released in 2019 from North Carolina State University in Gina Fernandez's program. It's a mid to late season and kind of seen as a replacement for Camarosa. Uh, it's said to be high yielding. One thing of note that we observed about Liz was that it had very low fall runner production, much less than Chandler, and that when we biomassed in the late fall and early winter, Liz was a close second behind Rocco with having the highest average crown weights. Um, and it was not quite that double that of Chandler. And if we look through here, you know, you can kind of observe that, that the plants are pretty big and vigorous, a lot of good leaf biomass in there. If we move in and start looking at the flowers and fruit, uh, again, remember, this is a later variety, so we expect to see kind of a crop that's not quite as progressed as some of these other ones. Uh, but, you know, we see a lot of small green fruit in there, uh, a lot of fruit coming. Um, and so it does seem like it has a pretty heavy fruit set, which is exciting to see. Some early ripening berries that maybe just have another day or two to go uh, and a few blooms that we still see in here as well. So we're really excited to see kind of how Liz performs for us this year. And we'll continue to evaluate it through the season. Next up uh, is another North Carolina State Union release, um, released in 2019 also through Gina Fernandez's program. This is an early variety, kind of seen as a replacement for Sweet Charlie. Um, it's described as having good flavor and medium large berries. We again observed very low runner production on Morocco compared to other varieties, an average of 0 0.125 runners per plant. Um, so basically very few runners, about one runner per 10 plants compared to about 1.83 runners per plant on Chandler. Again, when we biomass sampled in the late fall and early winter, Rocco had the biggest crown weight averages uh, and about double that of Chandler. It averaged about 3.75 crowns per plant. Again, probably smaller number of crowns than we would like to see, probably going back to some of that cold damage. Um, and we did see some cold damage in Rocco in the fall, but basically no cold damage when we came back and checked again in the spring. So it did seem like there was some recovery. If we look down and look at some of the fruit set, you know, we've been harvesting up this variety for about two weeks, but we see, you know, still a lot of fruit coming behind and some nice uniform kind of berry shape. 
Um, I would say plants are maybe a little bit smaller than the Liz plants, but still a, a really nice showing of fruit and, and plant size. If we look at fruit, the fruit is kind of that nice conical shape and really dark red coloring through to the center, uh, no hollow on uh, this berry. Our next variety is Fronteras. This was released from the University of California in 2014. In previous trials, it had performed really well in Arkansas. It had slightly lower runner production than Chandler, about 1.28 per plant. But one thing that you can kind of see when you look here at the plants is that we have really high ratings of cold damage. And so the plants are not quite as vigorous as we would like to see. It had average cold damage ratings of 2.5. So again, moderate to severe. And when we did not see recovery in the crowns when we checked them in the spring. So when we came back and co opened crowns again, average ratings was still three, which to me means that, you know, these, these crowns had some damage in the fall and those crowns did not really recover and, and that damage internally started to decay. But, you know, for the size of the plants that we see here, if we actually move in and start looking at the fruit, you know, the size of the fruit is really nice, really big fruit size, pretty berries, still a few small green fruit coming along, uh, not seeing a lot of flowers and buds on this. So we'll see how the numbers play out on this over time. One thing of note when we cut open the fruit is white in the center and there is some hollowing in the, in, in the center of the fruit on this berry. Next variety is Ruby June, released in 2014 from Lassen Canyon. You know, Ruby June is one that um, is known to have good quality fruit, very pretty berries. I would say that growers, at least here in the state of Arkansas, have seen kind of variable yields. Some report high, others have seen more moderate. We did see some cold damage on this variety in some grower fields this year. You know, when we assess the plants here uh, in our trial, it was sort of moderate damage, pretty comparable to a lot of the other varieties. And I think some of the reasons we were seeing more cold damage on this variety in other fields was possibly due to smaller plant size. And so those plants were not as hardy and able to withstand the cold. So I don't think that was something really specific to the genetics of this variety and possibly just more to small plant size. You know, and when we went through here, you know, decent sized plants, uh, not a ton of leaf biomass, but if we start looking at the fruit, you know, some nice uniform kind of medium sized berries, a few buds and blooms still coming along, giant fruits, especially when you go back and think about the size of the fruit on front terrace, but down here on this plant, really nice uh, showing of fruit set. And if we look at the internal fruit color, Again, on Ruby June, uh, we do see some white internal flesh color. Finally, moving on to our last two. This one is Sweet Charlie. And of course, Sweet Charlie planted because it's early, though it's not necessarily really high yielding typically. I like this one a lot for flavor. Uh, we should we start of Florida in 1992. But you know, it's, when we look down in here and look at all the fruit that is being set, uh, you know, I think for, for Sweet Charlie, it's a pretty nice showing. Quite a bit of fruit, a lot of small green fruit still coming, but some nice bigger, you know, medium sized to large berries that are ready for harvest now. Again, this one going along with Rocco were our two earliest in this trial. We do see some hail damage uh, going here on that berry there. We'll see how Sweet Charlie plays out over the season. Internal fruit coloring, nice reddening into the edges of the fruit. And our last variety uh, is Camarosa. This is sort of the standard for pre-pick and production in some parts of the southeast. It has better shelf life than Chandler, which tends to get soft very quickly. Released out of the University of California in 1992, this is a variety that is not super widely planted in Arkansas, but we wanted to include it here because it's so widely grown in other parts. So far, nothing that has really stood out a whole lot about Camarosa. You know, it is a later season, so uh, a lot of the production is still coming. But when we look down in here, we are, do have a few ripe berries, pretty decent fruit set overall, and you know, kind of medium to large berries that are being ready for harvest now. Kind of maybe a little bit smaller plants than some of the other varieties. When we look at the fruit, the fruit does have nice red color through the center, possibly some hollowing in the middle. So we are continuing to collect yield data and we do have each of these varieties planted in each of our four rows. Up next, we're gonna move down to the end of the field here and talk to Leslie and Alden who have been collecting data and work here at the vegetable station. And they're gonna give us some updates on what they think their favorite varieties are so far. And so we're looking forward to talking to them and hearing their feedback. Hi, I'm Leslie Smith. I'm one of the program associates here at the Vegetable Research Station. We've been harvesting strawberries for about two weeks now, and so far Rocco has been one of our favorites. The plant is nice and big, a lot of good green leafy growth, and the berries are big as well, and nice and in good flavor. 
My name is Alden Hotz. I'm a program associate here as well. Um, so far, the Rocco has been exciting to eat. It uh, matured early, so we've been, eating, been able to eat those for a while. Um, the Camino Real and the Fronteras are also looking good. They're uh, a little bit slower than the Rocco in maturing, but we we'll look forward to the um, harvest of those as well. Mm -hmm.